Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Carlos Takam rolled back the years, wins a 10 round split decision over Tony Yoka. The right man won, in my opinion, in Carlos Takam. Split decision, I wasn't surprised, to be honest with you, when I heard split decision was announced because Yoka has got some extremely favourable well, he didn't get a decision against Martin Bacoli, but he got a very favourable scorecard. The judge who had it a draw. I think one of the judges who had Bacoli winning only had him winning by a small margin. If you've ever seen that fight, I mean, that's as blatant a win as you'll ever see. I mean, you could argue that Yoka only won a round or so in that fight. This fight, he had a few more rounds, but you could see from the first bell, he wasn't comfy in there. He was not comfy at all in there. And to be honest with you, Tony Yoka, I was, I was watching the Sky commentary and they were talking about Yoka not having the confidence. And look, I can imagine after the loss he had to Martin Bacoli and the nature of that loss, he took a real beating in that fight. It would dent your confidence. But I haven't really been impressed with Tony Yoka for the last few years. And, you know, looking at him in this fight and comparing this Tony Yoka to the Tony Yoka who fought Dave Allen who, yeah, it was around about Dave Allen time we fought them, Matrenko, that Tony Yoka, it's night and day, that Tony Yoka seemed, well, that Tony Yoka was lighter, he was 10 pounds heavier than he was against Bacoli in this fight, made no difference, he just looked just very ponderous, just looked pedestrian in there. The punches he was throwing, they had no authority on them, he was actually, his jab was falling short, believe it or not, at times, and he was walking into jabs by Carlos Takam, Tony Oak is about 6'5", 6'6". Carlos Takam 6'1". You should not, under any circumstance, be walking into jabs by a guy 6'1", when you have that type of reach advantage over you. Crazy. But I was saying, Yoka, he I felt he hasn't looked the same since around about 2018. And I don't think there's any coincidence, in a sense, that that coincided with... He didn't fail any drugs tests. He didn't fail any. But he did miss, I believe it was several tests that he was meant to go to. Drug tests. Met, didn't go to them, didn't attend or something like that. I know he missed them for whatever reason. And I believe he might have even served a small ban for that as well. And since then, the confidence has completely gone from Tony Yoka. He definitely doesn't have the same authority in terms of his punching power. You know, Yoka was never noted in the amateurs for being, you know, devastating the puncher. No. But... Dave Allen actually came out and said that he was, years ago, or a couple of years ago anyway, that Yoka was the hardest puncher he's ever been in the ring with. I remember him saying that in the interview. I think it was with IFL years ago. It might have been even on Instagram Live or something like that. It was one of them. He said Yoka was the biggest puncher. Now, Dave Allen has a very good chin. He, If he's thinking Yoka's the biggest puncher, right, and he's getting stopped by him and getting hurt by him, there's no reason why Yoka shouldn't be because Takam is tough, but he's never sh he's he's not chinny under no stretch, but he's been stopped and hurt and dropped before, and Yoka couldn't put a dent in him. Takam was all over Tony Yoka like white is to rice. Yoka since the amateurs has struggled with guys who apply pressure, who really put it on him, and in this fight it was no different. Takam was able to set the pace early. He was able to make Tony Yoka uncomfy in there, and Yoka. Everything he did, he appeared to lack confidence in it. He had no confidence in his jab. His technique looked a bit off. You know, everything in there just looked awful for Tony Oka. There was a few moments in this fight where he did get his jab working nicely and landed a couple of right hands here and there. But they were few and far between. For the most part, it was just Takam outworking Tony Oka. He hurt him a couple of times with some right hands. I remember there was a time Tony Oka... He got hit with a big right hand, the mouthpiece came out and, you know, he just kind of went through the rest of that round. And by the end, there was only ever one winner. There was only ever one winner in this fight and it was Carlos Takam. And it's not a good look losing to a 42-year-old Carlos Takam who's coming off back-to-back -back losses, one of them a stoppage loss to Joe Joyce. It's not an amazing look and they really need to go seriously back to the drawing board with Tony Yoka. I don't really know how you're going to fix it, to be honest with you, because he seems set in his ways. He seems amateurish at, at times in there. 
maybe a new trainer. I don't know if Virgil Hunter is the guy to work with Tony Oka, to be honest with you. He, he, something needs to change big time in that team. It really does. Because this Tony Oka, I was quite hyped for Tony Oka when he turned over originally because he looked so good in his early fights. And I guess you could say, well, gee, okay, he didn't officially fail any test, but you know, you know. So, I mean, what do you say? Second loss in a row for Tony Oka. And they were booing. You know, the fans knew who won that fight. They were booing in there. This was in France. Don't know what to say. I really don't. Yoka, I think for me, if I was, look, this is just me with my matchmaking hat on. If I was matchmaking him, I would have, and this is before Takam, I would have just sent him in there with cream puffs. Maybe two or three, four or five cream puffs just to get his confidence back. For somewhat confidence after that debacle against Martin Bacoli. Going in there against someone like Takam stylistically you know i thought takam wouldn't have as much in the tank as he did going into this fight he obviously had a lot more than i gave him credit for but stylistically you knew that takam could pose problems for tony yoka but not this many problems so tony yoka takes a second career loss back to back i really don't know where he's going to go from here you know there was talk of joe joyce a couple of years ago i mean heaven forbid you put him in with joe joyce the poor lad will get absolutely knocked from pillar to post by joe joyce and taken out badly I don't know. Um, is it something from the amateurs? You know, obviously Yoke has been ironed out in the amateurs. That knockout is online. I think it was in 2011, 2012, and it was a bad knockout. He went down pretty heavy. He struggled again with pressure fighters in the amateurs, struggling to keep them off, struggling to adapt, struggling to cope. I don't know how you fix that from a mental standpoint, you know, physically and mentally with Tony Yoke. It's like people say, and, and I myself say with Joshua, it's mental. It is, and how do you fix that? But Joshua physically is is not that bad. Yoka doesn't have the physical attributes that Joshua has. He's not as strong. He's not the puncher. He has speed there, but he just, it's, he just like he can't put the pieces together. There's a good fighter in there, but boy, is he all over the place. That's the best way I'd say it. He is just all over the place in there. You know, he doesn't know what he's doing or what he wants to do, I should say. Looks amateurish at times. Seems to be stuck in that style still. And it's seven years nearly since his last amateur fight. So that should be well and truly gone by now. You would think that Virgil Hunter, who is a trainer I rate very highly, should have been able to go and do his work on that. If he can't, well, we need someone who can. That's what I'd be saying for Tony Yoka. So that was the fight in a nutshell. Obviously, on the undercard, Dan Aziz picked up the European title. I believe Sky said he's the first man to win area, British, English, Commonwealth, European. He's done it that way, the proper way. The only other person was Lee Selby. Lee Selby obviously didn't win an English title, won a Welsh title, which is basically you know, the same kind of thing. So, credit to Dan Aziz. I saw the end of the fight. I can't remember his name now, but... Apparently he got robbed badly, the away fighter who Joe Gallagher was training. And yeah, that was the card in a nutshell. So, you know, it was all right. Dan Aziz looked very good. I will, but the uh, MVP of the night was Dan Aziz. He looked very good. And, you know, Dan Aziz, he's been looking better and better each fight. I was trained by Buddy McGirt now. He needs to get a move on. That's what I always say about Dan Aziz because he's getting into his mid-30s now. I didn't realize he was that old until I was obviously seen it last year. I was like, Jesus, that's 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 ch that changes things a bit because I thought Dan Aziz was younger than that. Um, talented fighter is Dan Aziz, improving massively every time I see him. So looking forward to seeing how he gets on. For that now, lads and lassies, I'll leave you with that. Smash the like button if you could. Thank you as always to the hit company for today's sponsors, as they always are. For now, I'll leave you with that. I'll talk to you. Peace.